Hey everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Topo Talk. Today's example is this bottle thread. And while the topology isn't that bad, to go into subdivision here, you can see it actually smooths out quite well. Around the other side, if I could just come around here, a little bit of pinching in there. And you can see there is a problem here. This is a massive n-gon. So this needs to be terminated somehow. And it can be a bit tricky with threads, obviously because they spiral. So understanding where to terminate can be a little bit confusing. Doesn't look too bad around here. This is all quads actually. I saw this and I just thought there probably is a better way to approach this. And there's actually a couple of ways you could do this. So the first thing I usually do when I'm needing to clean up some topology is you know, work out what's unnecessary and get rid of that first, strip it all down and then rebuild it. So let's give it a try. So I'm here in Blender. Just going to select a few loops and just dissolve those. Always keeping an eye on you know, the other side, making sure I'm not breaking the model. If we can get rid of this one and this one and this one and this one. So these are all the sharpening loops. Just dissolve those. Doesn't matter about this one. What I'm actually going to do is, let's see, get rid of that one. And that one, I think that's good. Okay. I could weld these or merge them. What I'm going to do though, is I'm just going to select all of this and just delete it. Delete faces. Okay. So now I will just merge these. ML here in Blender. I'm just getting it back to something a little cleaner. And quick way to rebuild this would be just to use F2 if you have the add-on installed, free add-on. I use a similar option by Machine Tools called SmartFace. We're going to hit four and four and for this one, I'm just going to select that, hit F and close that up. All right, so that's much cleaner there now, something I can work with. I do select these two here, weld those. Still saying weld from my Cinema 4D days. I mean merge. Okay, so definitely much less to deal with around here. Why don't we just grab the knife tool and what I'll do is I'll just cut in a loop here and just terminate that there and terminate that there. That looks okay. Now I can just bring this around. Obviously threads spiral, so it can be a bit confusing as to where to terminate. So this is where these kind of looping strategies are really important. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. A little bit of shading error just there. Not too bad. I'll just leave that like that for now. Come back around to the other side. And I never like these long triangles on curved objects because they can be a real problem. We could go and just Put a cut down there, grab that vert, and just slide that. Obviously, that's um, giving us quads, so that's not bad. I'm going to come over to my normals and just check. I've auto smoothed on. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. We could do that. Undo. See, that's taking this down. I'm just going to bring this up to 90. There we go. And just make sure that shade smooth is on. Actually, 90 is a little too much. Just for now, that looks good. All right, so another way we could turn this into a quad is just to put a cut down through here. And this will sharpen this end bit. like that. 
And then we just have to select this edge and this edge and dissolve. So if we look at that under subdivision, that has sharpened that up. It's a bit pinchy there. And like I said, I don't really like these long ones. So we could slide that out. You'd have to bring this one down. And this one up. So we can slide that out like that. Obviously working with curvature, you've always got to be super careful. That's not too bad. And we could also come in and add a loop through here. I'm using the 3.1 beta, by the way. So that's not bad. That's actually a really nice result. Now, with something like this, and this is very important for beginners, I know I was in this boat. When I started out, for me, under subdivision, everything had to be super sharp. I would just put control cuts everywhere, and I wanted everything to be super crisp, and that's definitely a trap. What you need to consider is what does the actual object look like in real life, and nine times out of ten, it was never as sharp as I would make it. And also, how close is the camera going to be to the final? Even if this is super sharp on the real object in real life, if you're going to be this far away from it, you know, does it have to be super, super sharp with, you know, really tight control cuts? Most probably not. That's actually a really good result, I think. One thing I could do is just slide this edge out a little further, and that would make this quad a little less stretchy. Let's bring this out. this one that is obviously flaring that out so you'd probably want to do that before you added that now I'm actually getting a little bit of clipping here so I just need to fix that reduce the start clip there we go and just easing that tension a little bit just by dragging that out a little further if I wanted to take that one out, maybe I'd need to come to normal. Actually, that won't do that. So what I can do, quick way to do this is just to, in Blender, just create a custom orientation for that edge, then select that edge, just slide it out. I'm just going to get rid of that now. So that reduces that now and just eases that a little bit. So it looks even better now. You see we've got a little bit of shading error going on in there. Always pays to come in and check out your geometry from the side. If you ever watch me modeling, you see I'm moving around my object all the time. We do have a pole on this leading edge. So we probably want to get rid of that. Let me just select that and that. It's going to put a loop around there. It's going to sharpen this. So I'm going to quickly save before I do that. I'm going to add a bevel here. So Control-B in Blender and bring that out, roll my mouse wheel. And I'll just... Hold down P and drag just to take that shape to one. This is going to be quite tight. It's still a pretty nice result up here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Very nice. How does it look around here? See, that's moved that pole away from that edge, which is good. It's not bad. And of course, it depends how close you're going to get to the model, what kind of camera angles. You know, if you're this far away and you're viewing it from here, you can't see anything. Okay, so now let's take a look at a slightly different approach, and that's to use creasing under subdivision. So I'm just going to select everything that I want to add a crease to. And in your software, this may be known as weighting. So it's basically the entire thread 
Now in Blender, if I come up to item, I can increase the mean crease here, or I can just press Shift E and drag to the right. It gives me a mean crease of one. Come over to my sub D, I'm gonna bring that down to one and one. And what I'm gonna do is just apply that sub D. And now you can see we've doubled the amount of geometry, but we've kept the sharpness of the thread. So I just select all and then just bring that mean crease down to zero. If we add another sub D surface, and bring it up to two, take a look at that. So we've been able to keep that fairly sharp and not affect the curvature without putting in those extra control loops. So the use of creasing or weighting under subdivision and then making that sub D editable is a really great way of not affecting your curvature and being able to lock in the detail that you need without applying extra control loops. And it's not too bad at this side either. Little bit going on up here, but that's because once again, we have that, let me just turn this off. We have that pole on that leading edge. If I go control B and just bevel that a little bit, obviously it's gonna add another loop all the way around, but that looks pretty good. Just a tiny, tiny amount of shading error there, but the result is pretty great. And the great news is that inside of Blender 3.1, we also have vertex creasing. That's brand new. So you will see me in upcoming tutorials using this technique of creasing both edges and vertices under subdivision to lock in the curvature. And obviously that's increased the face count. So once again, it depends how close you're gonna to be to this object. If we had to be this close, we're doing sort of a hero shot for a whiskey commercial or something like that, then you really need to lock that in quite tightly. So you do need a higher face count. But if we're gonna be this far away, as I mentioned before, you just don't need that much geometry. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Be sure to leave any questions or observations in the comments. For now, this is John. Have fun modeling and I'll see you in the next tutorial.